Now we're going to have a look at the law of conservation of energy. And if you recall, what this basically means is that the total amount of mechanical energy in a system remains constant. Energy can't be created nor destroyed, but it can be converted from potential into kinetic and vice versa. So what we can essentially say is, is basically this, that in a system, the potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy. Symbolically, we would say EP is equal to EK. Mathematically, using our mass symbols, we would say mgh, mass times gravity times height for potential energy, is equal to one-half mv squared for kinetic energy. Well, once again, let's have a look and see how this actually works in action. We have a 10-kilogram water balloon dropped from a height of 12 meters. Calculate the speed of the balloon just before it hits the ground. Now, speed means velocity. Well, the guy who contains velocity is kinetic energy, mass times velocity squared divided by 2. Uh, but we don't have everything that we need right off the bat here. Let's start with the equation that says the gravitational potential energy, mgh, is equal to the kinetic energy, which is mass times velocity squared, and divide that by 2. I want to try and get this thing uh, isolated for velocity. So what I think I'm going to try and do here is, uh, well, first off, I'm going to multiply both sides times 2. Uh, because that'll eliminate this divide by 2. And so now I get 2 times mgh is equal to mass times velocity squared. And if I want to get velocity by itself, I would divide by mass and divide by mass, and I'd get a cancel here, and I'd get velocity squared. But look what happens over on the other side. I actually get to cancel out the masses there. All I'm left with is 2 times gravity times height. And then vo velocity will simply be the square root of 2 times gravity times height. So I can really simplify my equation. I don't even have to worry about the mass because it cancels out. So the velocity of this object will be the square root of 2 times gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, multiplied by the height, which is 12.0 meters. Okay, so let's get out the calculator and have at that. We want to get the uh, second function, square root, what is uh, 2 times 9.81 times 12 meters. And close off those brackets, and there's our answer. It's 15 decimal 344 yada 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 uh, meters per second and uh, it looks like I'm going to have to have just three significant digits in my answer so I guess I'll prune this down to 15 decimal three meters per second so there's a, a really good uh, indication of you know why you learn to do all that algebra solving uh, in previous math courses because it sure comes in handy I was actually able to cancel out the mass and make my work a lot easier all right a 30 kilogram child on a trampoline jumps vertically into the air with an initial speed of 1.60 meters per second. Calculate how high the child will rise. Well, once again, this is going to require me to make the connection that the potential energy equation is equal to the kinetic energy equation. And this time what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out the, uh, the height. Um, now to do that, uh, what I would what I would do is I would divide this side by mass times gravity, cancel, cancel, and I'd have to divide this side by mass times gravity. So in other words, what I end up getting here is I can get the height of this uh, kid by taking, oh, and look at this again. Look, the mass up here and the mass down there cancel. Well, that's going to make my life really easy. Uh, all i got to do to find the height is I just simply take the velocity squared, uh, 1.60 meters per second squared, and uh, divide that by 2 times the gravity, which is 2 times 9.81 meters per second. Now, you better put that in brackets, otherwise you'll mess up your calculations. So, what do I get if I get out the calculator and do this? What is uh, 1.60 uh, squared, and then divide that by, and in brackets, 2 times 9.81. What, what do we get? Uh, point one three zero. Okay, so we get a height of zero point one three zero four seven yada, yada meters. Uh, round that off to looks like three significant digits. Zero point one three zero meters. That's how high that uh, that's how high that kid jumped. 
All righty. Uh, a 2.0, a 20 gram dart is fired from a dart gun with a horizontal speed of 4.10 meters per second. Total mechanical energy of the dart is 0 0.481. Find the gravitational potential energy. So this one uses the concept we'd had in the previous lesson on total mechanical energy. Now, if you remember how this one works, the mechanical energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Well, you want to find the potential energy. All right, well, that's not, uh, that's not hard to do. The potential energy will just be the mechanical energy take away the kinetic energy. All right, well, what does that actually look like? Okay, well, that means that the potential energy is equal to the mechanical energy, which they said was 0 0.481 joules. Take away the kinetic energy, which is mv squared divided by 2. All right, what's our mass? 20 grams. All right, well, right off the bat, we're not using grams. We've got to use kilograms. So that's going to become 0. Point, uh, move it three places, 0, 0.020 0 kilograms. There's your mass now in kilograms. Multiplied by your velocity, 4.10 meters per second. And that has to be squared. And the whole silly thing has to be divided by 2. So there's our mass. 0 0.481 joules. Now, let's get out the calculator to figure out what this mess is worth. Uh, 0 0.020 kilograms multiplied by 4.10 meters per second, and that has to be squared, and then all of that has to be divided by 2, and there's my answer. So what I'm going to subtract is, I'm going to subtract... Uh, 0 decimal 0.1681 joules. All right. Oh, one thing we can definitely do with a calculator is some subtraction. So what is 0 0.481 subtract uh, 0 0.1681? What do we get? 0.3129. All right. We get 0. 3129 joules and what can we get away with here it looks like it's three significant digits again so i'm gonna to have to round this guy off to 0 0.313 that nine is going to cause that two to bump up to a three so there's how much gravitational potential energy this dart has all right last one a pendulum consists of a 500 gram metal ball suspended on a 50 centimeter string the ball is pulled up horizontally and up a total vertical distance of 10 centimeters. It's then released. At the bottom of the arc, the mechanical energy of the ball was determined to be 0 0.491 joules. What was the speed of the ball at the bottom of its arc? So just to visualize what's going on here, we have a pendulum on the end of a 50 uh, centimeter string. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull it off to the side here. Uh, and it, we're going to end up pulling it off to the side and raising it a total distance of 10 centimeters. And then we're going to let it go and figure out what's his velocity right here when he's swung down to his lowest point. Well, this too is a, a mechanical energy problem based upon the formula that uh, mechanical energy is equal to uh, kinetic energy plus uh, potential energy. And if you want to get velocity, then you need to zoom in on that uh, kinetic energy equation because kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared divided by 2. So if you want to rearrange the equation, then you can say that the, the kinetic energy will be equal to the mechanical energy uh, minus uh, the potential energy. Or if you prefer, the kinetic energy, mass times velocity squared divided by 2, will be equal to the mechanical energy and subtract the potential energy, which is mass times gravity times height. So if we start to put in our, our numbers for this, we're going to get something that looks like this. The kinetic energy, mass times velocity squared divided by 2, is going to be the mechanical energy, which is 0 0.491 uh, joules. Subtract the potential energy. Uh, the mass of 500 grams we're going to make into kilograms, so that's 0 0.500 kilograms multiplied by gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared, multiplied by the height, 10 centimeters is what we lifted it. Convert that into meters, that's 0 0.010 meters. So mass times velocity squared divided by 2, that's kinetic energy, 
is equal to 0 0.491 joules take away. Now, what are we taking away here? Well, let's get the calculator out. We've got uh, decimal 5 of a uh, kilogram multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared multiplied by a vertical distance of 0 0.01 uh, uh, meters. What is that? Zero point, okay, so we're going to take away 0 decimal 04905 joules. So mass times velocity squared divided by 2, the kinetic energy will be, what do I get when I subtract here? 0 0.491 joules subtract 0 0.04905 what do we get? Okay, we have a difference of 0 0.44195 joules. Now, we're still trying to find velocity, so I'm going to try and get velocity by itself. First, I'm going to multiply by 2, cancel, cancel, multiply this by 2, and then to get rid of that mass, I would divide this side by mass, cancel, cancel, and so I would divide this side by the mass. Now, what was the mass of this thing? 0 0.500 uh, kilograms. Okay, so now I've got velocity squared will equal this. So, what do I have if I, well, I've already got that answer in there, so multiply that times 2 and then divide it by decimal 5 and we get an answer of the, the velocity squared is 1 decimal 7, 6, 7, 8, meters squared per second squared. Now, if I just want to find velocity, all I've got to do now is find the square root of this number. So second function, square root, 1 decimal 7, 6, 7, 8. There we are. The velocity is 1.329588 yadda yadda meters per second. And... Um, three significant digits, so I'm going to have to round this off to being the velocity will be one decimal three, and I guess that'll be a three meters per second. So there was quite a bit of algebra going on in that one.